If you could send one experiment to Mars, what would it be? Earlier this year, Mars One asked that very question to university students all around the world, inviting them to send in payload proposals for the 2018 Mars One lander. The selected payload will accompany the FinFilm solar arrays, soil collection, water extraction and video camera demonstrations on what will be the first private mission to Mars. The list of entrants has since been whittled down to a final 10 by Mars One in partnership with Lockheed Martin, who will actually build the 2018 lander, but now it's up to you and the general public as a whole to decide which one will get to go to Mars. So let's take a look at the competing payloads. First up, there are two experiments competing in order to grow the first plants on Mars. Mars Micro Greenhouse is a United Kingdom based project to grow lettuce on Mars in a small pressurised greenhouse using carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere. There's also SEED, which is a collaboration between Spain, Portugal and the Netherlands to grow Arabidopsis faliana seedlings in a fully autonomous container. Carrying on with the theme of bringing life to Mars, the Cyano Knights team in Germany wants to send a small sample of cyanobacteria to Mars to photosynthesize carbon dioxide into oxygen. But that's not the only way to produce oxygen, because the Australia-based project Helena aims to demonstrate electrolysis, the process of converting water into oxygen by putting electric current through it, as well as carry a DVD time capsule to be collected by future Martian colonists. There's also India's PECR, which plans to use a semiconductor-based electrochemical cell to convert CO2 to a number of different gases for study. Next up is two US-based projects, which plan to work on experiments to improve the habitats for future Martian colonists. IHISS aims to inject a polymer resin into Martian soil samples in order to create composite materials that could be used to enhance radiation shielding. And speaking of radiation, Mara DS wants to measure the amount of cosmic rays and solar energetic particles at the surface, as well as to study how effective Martian regolith is at blocking it. Now, any human mission to Mars will require copious amounts of water, which is where US-based Project Midas comes in. This would use the acoustic seismic vibrations caused by the sample acquisition device in order to detect deposits of water ice beneath the surface. But there's more to water use than just drinking it, which is where the US-based Project Urine Greenbox comes in. They aspire to convert synthetic urine into hydrogen and clean water, as well as to test the quality of the water produced in order to establish if it is drinkable. And finally, there's SPARK, which is a US-based proposal to observe and study the weather patterns on Mars in order to better characterise the environmental conditions in the vicinity of the eventual human outpost. It's now up to a public vote to decide which experiment will get to go to Mars. You can vote either on the Mars One community platform, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, or by subscribing to Mars One's newsletter. The full details of how to do so I've put in the video description down below, but note that the votes on Mars One's community platform will be worth more as a reward to long-term supporters of Mars One. You can vote up to December 31st, and the winner will be announced on January 5th. Ah, oh, I can't wait! So what else has been going on in the Mars One world? Well, on December 8th, the Round 2 interviews began, with the 660 candidates remaining in Mars One's astronaut selection process. My interview has been scheduled, but I can't say more about the process at this time, as we've all signed non-disclosure agreements. But once the interviews have all been wrapped up in around, say, two months or so, and the NDA is lifted, I'll be sure to tell you all about them. So when can you watch the interviews? Mars One is filming all of the interviews on their end with Dr Norbert Kraft, but many of us will also be filmed on our end by local film crews. Whilst the official Mars One documentary TV show won't be coming out until at least summer 2015, the footage from the local film crews will be made available much sooner. The earliest you could realistically expect to see it is February 2015, though March or April is more likely. Finally, I know it's frustrating that so many aspects of Mars One's technical plans aren't in the public domain at the moment, but I wanted to assure you that hard work is still going on behind the scenes.
Mars One's policy is to have full technical feasibility studies carried out by leading aerospace suppliers and providers before making the intricate technical details public, as this will best advance the technical credibility of their mission architecture, which is vital to secure the large-scale funding they need to actually pull this mission off. But don't worry, you won't have to wait that much longer though, as the first technical feasibility study, which was carried out by Paragon Space Development Corporation on the life support systems and the Mars pressure suit, should be finished around the end of February 2015 with a public release coming subject to passing ITAR regulations around the middle of March. Which university payload do you want to see fly to Mars? Or do you have an idea of your own? Let me know in the comments below along with any other questions you have about the Mars One mission. This is my last video in 2014 so to look back on this year be sure to check out the other Mars One mission updates up there on the top or for a bout of nostalgia you can watch my original Mars One application video and my first TV interview over there on the right. 2015 is going to be a great year for Mars One and I've got some very exciting videos planned for January including how to terraform Mars and the search for habitable exoplanets. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them and until then I wish you all happy holidays and I'll see you next year.